wood warp. It's a killer of projects and it's a constant hassle for carpenters and woodworkers. There are four main types of wood warp and for the most part they all occur for the same reasons. So in this video we're going to discuss what they are, why they occur, and what you can possibly do to avoid them. That's coming up next on The Honest Carpenter Show. The four types of wood warpage are bow, crook, cupping, and twist. A bow is a longitudinal warp along the wide face of the board. When I was growing up, we called this a ski because it sort of looked like a snow ski with the upturned ends. A crook is also a longitudinal warp, but along the narrow face of the board or the edge. It sort of makes the board look like a curved sword. Cupping is warpage across the width of the board, which causes the adjacent edges to turn upwards, giving the board a cup or bowl shape. And a twist is warpage where the two long ends of the board turn or rotate slightly in opposite directions, creating this kind of twizzler effect. How wood warps has a lot to do with what part of the tree it came from. Wood cut more or less parallel to the growth rings, what we call plain sawn or tangential, warps the worst. It will usually cut towards the bark side of the tree, opposite the growth ring structure, so away from the heart of the tree. But wood cut mostly perpendicular to the growth rings, what we call quarter sawn or radial, will be much more stable overall. That's one of the reasons it's more expensive. Carpenters have come up with all sorts of ways to work around these defects in most of our lumber. For instance, if floor joists have a crook, we'll turn them so the high part of the crook points upwards to counteract the weight of people standing on it. Likewise, if a bunch of studs have crooks, we'll turn them so that they crown in the same direction. This way the wall won't look too wavy. So carpenters will often deal with warpage, or we'll just cut up warped lumber into like smaller pieces that we can use. Woodworkers, on the other hand, will often try to shape warpage out of the board. They might plane a cut board, for instance, thinning it down to make it flatter. And they sometimes even employ ways to draw warp out of a board, which can be a pretty tricky task. In the future, I'll do more videos on how to deal with lumber warpage, but for this video, I wanted to concentrate more on just why wood warps so that you'll have a baseline knowledge. So let's talk about that. Generally, wood warps because of fast, uneven changes in moisture content. This specifically happens in the drying out phase. Really, the best way to think about it is like this. Wood is a lot like a sponge, designed to absorb and release moisture. When wood is still in the tree, it has a very high moisture content, as much as 30 to 50%. But when wood is harvested, it begins a natural process of drying out. It's seeking a moisture content that will be in balance with the air around it. This is what we call the EMC, or the equilibrium moisture content. At first, when it starts drying, wood loses what's called free water, which is water trapped in the hollow spaces inside the wood structure. But like this sponge, even when all the free water is out of the wood, it's still not technically dry. You still have molecular water in the fibrous structure of the wood cells, and this is called bound water. All wood warpage occurs when bound water begins to escape and wood drops below its fiber saturation level. So there's really no better example of this than a damp sponge versus a dry sponge. As you can see, I wrung the sponge out, but it's still a bit damp, so it holds its shape. But over time, after much more of the water escapes, it winds up like this. The same thing can happen in drying wood if you're not careful. So if you want to avoid wood warpage, you have to avoid sudden, uneven changes in its moisture content when it drops below its fiber saturation level, about 26%. That's where all warp occurs, below that level. You can get totally scientific about this. You can get hygrometers and moisture meters like the ones we used in my home dampness video, and you can monitor your drawing wood constantly. Or you can just observe some simpler, more basic methods as well. The biggest one is don't let lumber get too damp after it's been dried. And if it does get too damp, don't let it dry out too quickly. For instance, if you get wet deck lumber and leave it out in the hot sun, it's going to curl up in a big bow. This is because one side of the wood is drying out much faster than the other side, causing the wood to curl in that direction. This happens on job sites constantly because lumber might be stacked on the ground or just left lying around in any available space. So keep it out of the sun until it's ready to install and keep it away from direct heat sources. Also, definitely try to keep it out of the rain or even heavy dampness because this can saturate it and start the whole process over again. And if you're going to be using wood for a sensitive project, go ahead and bring it into the area where it's going to be installed so it can start to get used to the moisture content of that place. Hardwood floor installers will often let their lumber sit for several days in a room before installing it. If they don't, it might change shape after sanding and installation as it loses or gains moisture to try to match the room around it. And if your lumber is still in the drying process, you want it to lie flat and have space between pieces for air to move through it evenly. 
There's an art to drying lumber. My buddy Logan Parker of the Heirloom Builder channel is a master at drying hardwoods in his solar kiln. You should check out his channel for great tips on that topic and more. I'll link it here and down below. But I'll keep this video short and wrap it up for now. I hope it was helpful. If you think of anything I didn't address or something you'd like to see me talk about in the future, please put it down in the comment section. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to check back in for more videos coming up soon. And please consider subscribing and hitting that little bell beside the subscribe button to turn on notifications. That way you'll know the moment we post a video. I'm Ethan James with TheHonestCarpenter.com. I'll see you next time.